Hello and welcome to the next video of my World's 2023 preview series where we're going to cover Detonation Focus Me from Japan. They are pretty much year in and year out the um, dynasty from the LJL that appears at international events. It's just kind of the way that things are. Um, once in a great while there will be a different team over the last five or six years but more often than not it is DFM who we go over. Um, so this is the third time I'm actually doing this. Maybe even the fourth time. The last three years that Japan have went to international events, uh, 2022 and 21 were DFM. And in 21, DFM actually would get out of plans and go to group stage for the first time, I think, in LJL history under that previous for format. 2020, they'd be out in plans. It wasn't DFM. I think it was V3 Esports that year. Obviously, keep in mind, it is a different format now. And they are going to be in plans with majority minor region teams. So things will be interesting. Um, they played at MSI and went 0-4 this past, um, you know, just, just a few months ago. Uh, losing twice to, I believe, Loud and PSG. Their coach is Vivid. Vivid has no international experience as a head coach. He was only recently hired. Um, he played with DFM actually in 2018 at Worlds as a support. DFM have had a lot of issues over the last couple months. A lot of, um, uh, I mean, serious internal issues. Uh, their coach Kazu got suspended. Um, somebody else I believe got suspended. Toll 2 was in top lane for them. He left. Apparently there was some harassment done towards him, if I recall. Um, I could be wrong, but I feel like that is the vibe. Uh, they didn't, I mean... When a player leaves and the coach gets in trouble for harassment, I have to wonder that that was that was it. Um, so that's a thing. That's a thing with this team. The fines weren't that great. It was like twenty three thousand dollars USD or something. Like, you know, you see two million um, Japanese yen, or is that the currency? I could be completely wrong. Um, and you think it's a lot, but then you look at it in in terms of you know, your own currency, and you're like, oh, wow, given the fact that it was, you know, such terrible harassment and things like that, it's not as much as you otherwise would expect. So, Kazu is not the coach. Vivid is. So, I don't know how DFM really going to do. Um, speaking of that, because Toll 2 is gone, Utapon has role swapped back to top lane. Um, history lesson here, Utapon started as a top laner, then went to AD carry. So, at 27 years old, these are his stats from playoffs. He played like maybe four top lane games in the regular season, but those numbers are so skewed by AD carry. I only took his playoff stats. 4-4 four, four KDA, 7-6 CS per minute, 61-7 KP, so more facilitator oriented. 385 gold per minute, which is about 20.5% of the team's gold. 523 damage per minute, about 22.5% of the damage. No solo kills. On average, was even in lane, up about 250 gold, 1 CS, 135 XP, 7 champions in 13 games. Obviously, no international experience to cite as a top laner. I think in 2016, in the international wildcard qualifying round or whatever they did back then, he was a top laner, but those stats are hard to get. Over his career, he's 23 and 42 at international events. Uh, Worlds 2015, 18, 19, and 22. He was out in play-ins. 21, out in group stage. MSI 19, 20, 21, and 22, out in play-ins. Never got to the rumble stage or main event. So that's that's a, an interesting um, conundrum we have here where Utapon's in top lane. They have signed APA men. Um, I don't know if AP Amon's going to play. It was kind of late in the season, so they played Utapon top, played Milan at 80 carry. I'm going to assume this is the roster they go with, but I wouldn't be shocked if AP Amon end up playing um, in a pinch. I think he is 32 years old, though. In the jungle, it, oh, uh, by the way, this team's average age is 23.6 years old. In the jungle, we have Steel, Korean import, um, 24 years old. This past year... Uh, very, you know, these are Steel's numbers. In a facilitator meta, he's very good at staying alive. 6-6 six, six KDA. 5-3 CS per minute, 72-3 KP. 350 gold per minute, which is about 18% of the team's gold. 
355 damage per minute, about 14% of damage. One solo kill in 27 games. On average, though, domestically, did not open up leads. Only 70 gold up, down 3 CS, even in XP. 11 champions, 27 games. That is concerning. Um, if you go international, you need players that have opened up leads domestically, that have shown an ability to just get ahead and make things happen. And Steel just kind of did the second part, not the first part. So if he goes up against, I don't know, Junjia or Levi or or whomever in the um, in the play-in round, River or or even Sheo, uh, depending, there will be a situation where he could end up in a hole. Um, because he's not even dominating domestically this past uh, split. Internationally, 1.7 KDA, 5.2 CS per minute, 70 KP, 3.14 gold per minute, 2.92 damage per minute, on average behind 250 gold, 3 CS, 290 XP, 10 solo kills in 59 games, steal. Um, at first, I mean, I would even say last year when I went over this, I thought Steel was a, a world-class jungler, could compete. Um, his numbers were very good, but then you get to the event, and um, needless to say, leave a little bit to be desired, and maybe he's starting to fall off a bit now at this point in his career, and it probably doesn't help that DFM have had so many internal issues with the team. In mid lane, we have Arya, 22 years old. Arya is the best player on the team. This past split in the LJL, he was dominant once again. He's been dominant every split he plays there. Korean import and all. 6.5 KDA, 9.2 CS per minute, 65.6 KP. 4.59 gold per minute. That's about 24% of the gold. 7.44 damage per minute, 29% of damage. He is the carry of the team. 11 solo kills in 27 games. On average would gap his opponents by 700 gold, 11 CS, 400 XP. So Arya is the difference maker. Uh, this past MSI, he was not. In 2021, he was. Internationally, his numbers are kind of meh, uh, but they are minor region player numbers. Uh, 2.4 KDA, 8.2 CS per minute, 54.8 KP. So very, um, I mean, he's not, they don't fight, didn't fight around him in 2021 or in uh, MSI 2023. He had trouble getting gold. 3.70 Gold per minute, 419 damage per minute. That's reflective in the damage per minute when it comes to KP. 55% of the kills, 400 DPM. During the split, you got 744 DPM. Like, when he gets to international events, not quite as aggressive. Six solo kills in 21 games. On average, up 80 gold, 5 CS, 160 XP. Um, so... When they got out of groups in 2020, play-ins in 2021, Arya was the mid laner. So 6 and 15 internationally, and that's his only world's appearance. At MSI 21 and 23, out in uh, play-ins. So that is the caveat here, right? They have Arya again. Can they get out of play-ins? Can Arya match um, Katie and... Shoot. Oh my god, who are... It's not Yubao anymore. CFO, I think, of Jimmy and in mid. Regardless, my point still remains. Um, Arya has stepped up more than he did at MSI. He, he kind of struggled at MSI, really disappointed. Milan, 22 years old. These numbers are from playoffs. 4.9 KDA, 99 CS per minute, 73.4 KP. 4.65 gold per minute, which is about 24.5% of the team's gold. 6.26 damage per minute, only 25.5% of the damage. Secondary carry damage numbers, despite primary resources. Not a good look sometimes when that happens. Uh, on average, up 4.20 gold, a handful of CS, 90 XP, 5 champions, 7 games played um so play-ins and then the four regular season games they played bot lane no international games um played in academy kicked around a bit in the ljl before he joined dfm uh these numbers are pretty good coming off the bench no doubt uh but internationally i mean we'll see what happens like i said there's a ton of question marks at dfm um, just as we thought they were starting to get competitive more consistently, now they are, um, 
you know, with question marks once more. Alongside Milan, we have Harp, a 22 years old, a Korean import. Um, this past uh, split, 5.9 KDA, 79.5 KP, so four out of every five kills. He has his fingerprints on them. He is very active. 3.2 vision score per minute. Placed as eight wards every five minutes. About two to three control wards. So one control ward every other minute. Three control wards every five minutes. And clears uh, about one ward every three minutes. Two wards every five minutes. 12 champions, 27 games. Internationally, he dies quite a bit more than he does domestically. Um, 1.45 KDA, 67 KP. 255 vision score per minute. On average, places 7 to 8 wards every 5 minutes. A control ward every other minute. And clears 1 ward every 3 minutes. The vision score drop off makes a lot of sense. Given that now when he goes to an international event, he's against much better bot laners than he faces in the LJL. And uh, the vision score suffers. Despite putting down pretty much the same amount of wards. Um, internationally, 8 and 16. Uh, played with them last year at Worlds, dropped out in play-ins, and then MSI last year and this year out in play-ins. So, you know, outside of Milan, everybody has international experience. <sighs> this team is going to have its work cut out for them, though. I think that the lack of Kazu is going to be a problem. I think that they're going to hit snags. Um, you know, it kind of is what it is. Uh, this team... Some, but a team that I've won over, like I said, many, many times. Um, a team that a lot of us know if we watch international events. They are the dominant team in the LJL. They went to five games in the finals. Um, but otherwise, it was the DFM show once more. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And I hope to see you again tomorrow.